We've got a doubleheader tonight. The Raiders and the Browns at 5 o'clock Eastern, followed by the Vikings and the Bears at 8.15 p.m. Eastern. And then on Tuesday, two games played simultaneously, broadcast nationally by Fox. You'll get one or the other depending upon where you live. Washington at the Eagles and the Seahawks at the Rams. All of these games rescheduled from Saturday or Sunday. The Browns and Raiders were due to play Saturday on the front end of a doubleheader, and Washington Eagles and Seahawks Rams were due to play on Sunday. The games were moved two days each because of a rash of positive cases last week for COVID, presumably most of which the new Omicron variant, which for the vast majority of players who tested positive, Mike, they had no symptoms What? So ever. And even though 96 percent of the players are vaccinated and even though the NFL has taken other steps to try to limit the spread, it has gotten into multiple facilities. It has raced through multiple facilities. And I'm told that the league was actually thinking about canceling these games. That was the alternative. Play them with however many players you could put in uniform. And there was a, a, a minimum number that was higher than I thought it was going to be. It was around 44, 45, 21 offensive players, 20 defensive players, three specialists, two quarterbacks, seven offensive linemen. Like if you didn't check those minimum boxes, they were just going to pull the plugs on the games. The players don't get paid. And we just move on with teams playing 16 games instead of 17 for the season. The union got involved and insisted on these postponements to preserve the player pay and it also preserve the owner's revenue as well. So these games, barring some sort of extremely unexpected development at this point, will be played. They'll get the week in and then they'll definitely get, we'll talk about the changes they've made to definitely get the last three in, but they really had to do some heavy lifting and there was a lot of sweating and there was a lot of concern and there was a lot of turmoil, but they found a way to get, these other games in because of the outbreaks with the Browns, Washington, and the Rams. Oh, they did this last year, didn't they, Mike? I mean, they moved some games last year. Did, did, didn't we have a Tuesday game, if I'm trying to remember correctly? So oh, they moved plenty. This they moved wasn't plenty. like, oh, my God, this is a – yeah, this is – so it's not like the first time they did it, but the NFL, remember that memo way back when, was so set in their ways that – not this year, man. This year, if you can't feel the team, you're forfeiting. And if it's with a, it has anything to do with an unvaxxed player, you're not getting paid. I mean, they were trying to lay down the law. And all of a sudden, when that presented itself and there was a possibility of not getting paid, hell yeah, the players got involved. And you know what? As a former player, hell yes, I would have gotten involved. You know, so it's like all, all of a sudden everything got thrown to the wind and said, let's figure out a way when we can play these games because they because they can. And I get it. Raiders are mad because well, all of a sudden, wait, wasn't our fault. We, you know, we, we didn't have an outbreak. It was, you know, our opponent that did. Maybe they should fly out to us now instead of us having to go to them. So I get it. But when there's that threat of missing the pay, man, you're going to you're going to try to work to not have that. And, and again, as a former player, I completely understand that without question there was a sense of consternation from the Raiders the Eagles and the Seahawks because their attitude is we didn't do anything wrong we didn't do anything to cause this we're ready to go now there's also an element of boy we'd like to get our opponents at a time when they've got 20 25 guys on the COVID reserve list so the competitive nature does creep in and it's not like Washington the Rams or the Browns did anything wrong per se. It's this highly contagious variant that is slipping through and ripping through the protocols that previously were in place. So the end result was to rip the protocols up altogether. That's where we now are. That's how we're getting the rest of the season in. The league and the union basically have decided we're tearing down the walls. Like, the enemy is storming the walls. They're climbing the walls. What should we do? Well, let's just tear them down. Let's, let's just, there's no point. And, and, and that really is, I, I hate to be that blunt about it, but that's exactly what they're doing. They're saying, we can't keep this out. It's not making our players sick. We've got people who are vaccinated by choice who play. We've got people who are mandated to be vaccinated. All the other people in the building, the coaches, the staff, they're all required to be vaccinated. So let this wash through 
And they're going to continue to keep an eye on it because there could be obviously future mutations, especially if you let the virus just rip through. But they're thinking, let's let the vaccinations work. And the players never cared about it. That, that's the key here. It's amazing the union held this together as long as it did because the players never really cared. They never really were worried about the COVID outbreaks, the virus, the constant. It's not going to affect us. They've had that attitude. To hold it together as long as they did is impressive by the union. But I think union management just finally got to a point where they threw their hands in the air because you had the owners not wanting to lose their money through the cancellation of games and the players realizing that they'd agreed last year. Any games that aren't played, the players don't get paid. That's what brought labor and management together faster than ever before. There's nothing like the mutual threat of everybody losing their money to get labor and management on the same page, Mike, and it happened this weekend. And listen, and, and let's, let's not single out football. This is in life, right? When money is involved, you figure it out. And again, there was that the hard NFL, not going to move games for this reason or that reason. You're going to lose your pay until all of a sudden it didn't just hit but it hit in a massive way like it did this weekend. And, you, and like you said, a lot of players were asymptomatic. Here's the deal. Here, here's, remember, there's 1,800, 2,000 players with practice squad players and such. It is truly, from life standpoint, it can be a microcosm of society. Because I guarantee you, of all those players, there are players that didn't get vaxxed because they didn't believe in the vaccine. There are players that didn't get vaxxed for political reasons. There are players that got vaxxed because they believe in the vaccine. And there are players who got vaxxed because that was the way they were going to get paid. They knew they may not have to forfeit money. Just like in society, people are making the choices. The football guys are making the exact same choices. But what wins out, what wins out most of the time, is you figure out a way to get your money. And when they were presented with the possibility of this hard-worded memo actually coming into play, everybody, like you said, went, wait a minute. Wait, wait, what might happen? We might not get what? Uh, okay, let's, let's kind of revamp this thing. Let's, let's get together and, and work this thing out over money. I mean, that's, that's basically what we're doing here. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the problem going forward is, and the new protocols boil down to basically the vaccinated staff, coaches, and players are not going to be tested on a regular basis. They'll be tested if they have symptoms. More on that in a second. There will be a certain type of targeted spot testing that I don't think anyone really understands. But the key is going to be the players, the coaches, the staff who have symptoms. Now, some will be obvious. If somebody walks through the door and they're just staggering around and it's clear that they're sick, then someone's going to intervene and say, we need to test this person. Or I presume they'll do temperature checks. I remember in the early days of the pandemic, anywhere you went, they made you do a temperature check before you could go in the building. Right. But a lot of these symptoms can be easily concealed. And let's face it. As we get down to the final three weeks of the regular season and we get to the playoffs, who's going to tap out? Who's going to say, eh, I, I'm feeling a little congestion. Maybe I'm COVID positive. I'm, feeling a little, I'm not feeling well. You know, eh, I'm, eh. no, you're going to do what you have to do to hide it. You know, a lot of these guys have no symptoms. So if they have even the slightest symptom, they're not going to go tell somebody. Ben Roethlisberger is the only one who's done it this year. And look, it's, hey, when you're secure in your position, and I don't know how sick he got, but when you're secure in your position, it's a lot easier to do the right thing. If you're somebody who's fighting and scratching and clawing to stay on the roster, to stay in the starting lineup, to not want to give somebody else an opportunity to come in and show what they can do, or you're chasing a ring, trying to build a legacy, whatever the case may be, you don't want to let your team down, you, you, there's going to be a widespread temptation and reality, Mike, where people – will hide their symptoms going forward. And uh, I think we just have to accept that. And there isn't anything anyone can do about it. And if there's not even a question that's happening. It's just like we hit injuries. How are you feeling? Fine. You know, how's your knee? Fine. How's your elbow? Fine. Do you feel sick? No, I feel fine. Especially a lot of these guys are, uh, end up being surprised they tested positive because they're asymptomatic. You know, we sit here and talk about it, and there, there might be people listening going, my God, people, this is COVID we're talking about. This is dangerous. Yeah, yes, it, it, it definitely is. It, I'm, I'm just, I, we're trying to explain the thought process of players 
who are trying to get paid. And again, this isn't, this isn't unique to football. You know, there are people in the, in the real world out there that weren't working for a while that are working that want to make, get money and make their money back. So you're, you're going to be willing to hide things. So absolutely, players, unless you see them and they do the temperature checks and it comes up there or you see that they're congested or see they're not feeling good, it's kind of like the concussion. You know, back when I was playing, if you could hide that thing, you were going back in the game. You know, how many fingers? Two. Well, close enough. Get back in the game. But, but if you are walking around punch drunk, they're doing the right thing. They're taking that helmet away from you. But if you can hide it, players are going to hide it. They've hidden injuries from day one, and they'll hide sickness till the end of time. That's just right or wrong, whatever anybody wants to think about it. Just like I said about all the reasons players get vaccinated or not, that's their choice. That's their choice that they make, and, and, and you make your own personal choice. I don't control you. You do what you feel you need to do. In my world, where I played, because I was one of those foot soldiers, I didn't say a word about injury, any injury I had, because I knew if I left the field, I may not get back on the field. So the same thing with a sickness, and I know it's COVID, and I know it sounds ridiculous, but that's going to be the thought process of some players, no doubt about it. The NFL is taking great pride in its COVID protocols, a leader in industry and whatnot. And that's all well and good until the protocols become impractical. And as the pandemic becomes endemic to the population, that's the key. That was the realization. There's a point where you got to cut and run. And the NFL and the players, right or wrong, this is a reflection of broader society. There's a point where you just have to cut and run. And I had a sense this year, Mike, between – the fact that they allowed Aaron Rodgers to show up for press conferences on a regular basis without wearing a mask, even though they knew he was unvaccinated, to the complete lack of interest in exploring the fake vaccination card rabbit hole when you found three of them in Tampa and you just turn your head and don't look at the other 31 teams when you know they're out there. That told me that this year's protocols were about PR and politics. But when pragmatism took over, that's when they said enough because these rules we put in place are going to cause us to cancel games when we shouldn't have to cancel games because we have people who are positive who are fine. And we don't want to know. Howie Long explained it yesterday is don't ask, don't tell. That's basically what it is. We don't want to know. I was arguing as recently as last week that guys who are vaccinated, asymptomatic, and positive should be allowed to play. They've taken it a step farther. We're not even going to find out if they're positive. If you're vaccinated and you're asymptomatic, you're good to go. You get symptoms that we actually can notice, then we got a problem. So I guess the, the proper explanation is vaccinated and managed to make us think you're asymptomatic, you're good to go. And that's just the way it is. And the unvaccinated are the only ones who really are at risk here because now the virus is going to be everywhere. The guys who aren't vaccinated who and who haven't had it yet may want to just, on one last occasion, Mike, have a seat and think this through. Now may be the time to get vaccinated because that virus is going to be everywhere in these facilities. So, you know, again, not unique to football. This is society. This is other companies. You make protocols or guidelines that are PR positive, right? So you look good to the public because you're trying to sell your product and you, and, and you want people to look at your company and say, oh, look at them. They're doing the right thing. So you look good from the PR standpoint until reality hits, right? And then all of a sudden you get called on those guidelines and just like other companies outside the world of sports, it happened here in the NFL. And basically what they said is, oh, okay, well, we're going to change things around a little bit to now kind of fit the situation that we're in. So again, this, this while it's football, it's the most popular sport in America, this goes on, you know, outside of the world of sports as well. You want to look good. You want to do things that make you look good to the public. And then, unfortunately, you don't, you, at times, you don't expect to ever get called on them. But when you do, then new decisions have to be made. Some will stick to the guidelines and say we're sticking to them anyway. And some will change. I think in, the, in, in a lot of cases, most will kind of, you know, make it a little more malleable and kind of fit the situation that you're in like the NFL did right now. So these players are going to play these games. So you're going to get 17 games in. The owners are going to get their revenue and the players are going to get paid. Yeah, I mean, look, principal takes a back seat to profit. 
especially when you're looking at significant potential losses based upon adherence to a protocol that had become outdated by this current variant. And the NFL has made it clear they're going to continue to study. They're going to watch. If things change, they will make changes as needed. But at least for now, with this widespread variant that is making a small percentage of the vaccinated people sick, they did what they had to do and they move forward. They just want to get through the season. I think that's the sense that I get from talking to people around the league. They're determined to just get through this season, and then they'll figure everything out based on where we are after the season ends. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.